Hey you dorks, this is Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you are listening to The Dorkening. Hi, I'm Brian Johnson, and although you probably accidentally stumbled across it and have no idea why you're watching it, you are in fact watching The Dorkening. Hello, this is Tom Kenny, voice actor, uh, the voice of the Ice King on Adventure Time, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Ah, meow. Oh, Gary the Snail, too. Hey, guess what you're filling your eye holes and ear holes with? The Dorkening! Oh, I love the Dorkening. Very popular in Ooh. And Bikini Bottom. Hi, I'm Lou Ferrigno. You're watching The Dorkening. And you know what? You don't like me when I get angry, so don't get me angry. You better keep watching The Dorkening. Hey guys, this is Felissa Rose, and you're watching The Dorkening. Hey guys, it's Courtney Palm. We're shooting Death House, and you're watching The Dorkening. This is Anthony Michael Hall, and you're watching The Dorkening. Stay tuned, my friend's gonna show you what entertainment's all about, baby. The Dorkening. <laughs> The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <coughs> it's scary. Hey, welcome to Creator Spotlight, powered by the Dorkening Podcast Network. We have an awesome, awesome show scheduled for you today. 
And, and uh, by the way, my name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard. And as always, my friend Patsy, how's it going, sir? Oh, I'm doing well. And uh, I think you introduced the show a little bit uh, incorrectly. The multi-award nominated uh, uh, podcast creator spotlight. Oh, I'll have to add that. I guess. Why, thank you. Thank and you. For, hopefully uh, it ends up uh, award winning, but uh, I can't make any promises on that. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Philip from Dark Discussions, how's it going? Uh, very well, uh, Leo, and uh, happy, I guess, end of Fourth of July weekend, right? I know, I know. It was a fun one. So, Patsy, would you like to introduce our most awesome guest? Oh, I would. Uh, if you clicked on the thumbnail, you already know who it is, but uh, we are joined tonight by Emmy Award nominated. Uh, just if, if you've seen TV or movies, Ever before, uh, <laughs> you 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 know who he is. Uh, he's been. Let me see. Let me let me look at my list here. I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, so these are some small independent uh, independent products. Uh, I'm sorry, projects. Uh, Seinfeld, uh, Terminator Two, uh, and the the TV series Chuck, just to name one of the hundred plus uh, IMDb credits we have here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Mr. Mark Christopher Lawrence. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Anytime we can get uh, someone with your type of resume on the on the show, uh, we're we're happy to have you here. And it's not just we're talking we're not just talking about stuff from the past. We're talking about stuff you got coming up, what's going on presently and the future. So we have uh, all the ghosts from uh, from a Christmas Carol covered in this, uh, <laughs> in this podcast. <laughs> Uh, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so, so we wanted to bring up. Uh, so, you have a, a Emmy nomination for Stacks. Yes, uh, it's it's a short film that uh, Gerald Webb directed and and executive produced. Uh, I co-produced with uh, Meredith, and and it uh, it's it's a little departure from the way you normally see me, uh, but but really timely, and you know, from beginning to end, I think Gerald. Uh, emailed me or texted me uh, 48 hours before LA shut down for the pandemic. And, uh, you know, 48 hours later, we were in production and rapping that same night. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's pretty impressive. Wow. I mean, yeah. you have another, uh, uh, you know, speaking of uh, COVID and whatnot, you have a, a short film that you're in, uh, the, uh, the COVID love story of Romeo and Juliet. Which oh I, yeah, that was that was uh, a fun project to do. Um, you know, for one, the the uh, probably one of the the most phenomenal uh, black Shakespearean actors in the country, if not the world, was was in it. Uh, and you know, my friend Michael Taylor, who uh, just won an Emmy for his show Theater Corner, uh, directed and produced it, and it's a fun little piece. It sounds it. like it's, it seems like it's going to be interesting, especially, you know, there have been so many adaptations and takes on that. Uh, this last year definitely gave us uh, a, a new and interesting take that I don't think any of us were looking forward to. <laughs> I, I guess the right. creative folks have definitely uh, taken advantage of this situation. Well, you know, I think I think when COVID first started, I think I just I slept for two weeks straight. It's like <laughs> the cat would come in and look at me and go, are you a cat? <laughs> Even the cat's like, listen, buddy, you got to get up and do something. Might something. I suggest feeding me? <laughs> now, now, I have a couple questions for you about uh, stacks. Uh, first of all, um, uh, for the listeners who are, who are and people who are watching uh, this this episode here, uh, why don't you let folks know a little bit about what that's all about? Also, um, how is it uh, producing it too? Because, uh, like you said, you, you you did that as well. And um, for the nomination of the Emmy. Uh, uh, were, were you surprised? Did you get it as a, uh, a producer or an acting credit? Why, why don't you let folks know all about Stax? Um, the nomination was for lead actor in a nonfiction, in a fiction short. Um, uh, you know, when we started producing it, I, I mean, we called in a bunch of favors. You know, everybody, everybody worked. <laughs> we had no money, so everybody worked for ultra low budget. Which is which is fantastic, and um, you know we literally got together at about seven p.m. and wrapped it about three in the morning, and you know we were going to just pop it onto onto YouTube with 
as soon as we edited it. But once the editing process started, we saw that it was really good. The, the production quality uh, was fantastic. I mean, when you when you watch it, it looks like a big budget film. And, um, you know, we're really happy with the way it came out. Uh, it's it's it's, you know, social commentary and um, with a nice little twist at the end. So. And, and where, where could uh, people want to check this out? Because, uh, you, know, you know, for for a TV show, you just go to Netflix it's, if it's a, you know, it's, movie. It's on YouTube. It's, it's, a, it's a short film. It's, it's on it's about seven and a half minutes. It's on YouTube. Okay, so so it did finally make uh, YouTube. Uh, yeah, that's when we ended up posting it up, and, and okay. uh, it's 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 you'll enjoy it. <laughs> I will say Excellent. that I, I think it's a testament to the people involved that when you have something like that, that's so short and on such a low budget, that looks like you know this multi million dollar project. I think that you know, like I said, a testament to uh, the folks involved and their ability to really get the most out of whatever they happen to be doing. So yeah, we had we had one cameraman, one sound guy, um, a still photographer, and our director. That was the crew, you know. And and yeah. Meredith, <laughs> Meredith was wearing all the other hats. But it's it's uh, the the film itself. I mean, as as we shot, um, just the talent in the film is what made it work. And then Gerald's vision, you know, the way he saw it, uh, he was very sort of um, Cameron esque in the way he he knew what he wanted to see and then he was a lot like rusty cundiff in, in the way that you know rusty will give you a little rope and he, you know after he got what he wanted to see in the can then he'd say okay let's do a take mark and just do whatever you want to do and so some of my stuff got in there which is great now like now uh are you are you gonna um uh, work, work again with these crew. Obviously, I, I'm sure you would want to because you 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 you, know, you did so well with the folks. But have you folks talked like Gerald and you talked about? Hey, let's do it again. Let's do something else. It was so successful. Yeah, people keep asking us. You know, are we going to do more of that? But but I, I think that particular thing may not lend itself to more of it. But we have talked about other things that we want to do, and um, you know, we're kind of narrowing things down and seeing you know where we want to put our no money. <laughs> well you know you know uh we've talked about this uh before on other shows but um when you have a limited budget that's where some of the amazing creativity comes out you know trying to to do something with nothing and and you know that's where you can really see you know some talent shine oh absolutely and i, and I think you know for gerald this was his directorial debut i mean he's he's produced and and casted you know so many films that he, for the asylum and for deinstitutionalized, which is he and Chris Olin Ray's company, um, you know, I would say probably you know over ninety, close to hundred films that he's casted and or produced, and um, this is his de directorial debut, and it's fantastic. So what awesome. was? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Patrick. Well, I was just saying that's awesome. I was. Uh, so besides stacks. Um, was there anything else that you, you made during, I know this was made like right before like the shutdown, but um, during the pandemic, did you uh, create anything? I think the only other thing that, that, that we shot uh, was, was the Romeo and Juliet thing during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, um, I did some yeah. painful comedy during the, during the pandemic. I did, I did a show one night in a, in a, uh, a parking lot at a park and people sat in their cars and they, they fed the sound in through their radios, and when people laughed, they would flash their their lights and oh, and, nice. and honk their horns. And it was a really weird way to work because <laughs> you could barely see the cars; it was so dark. Yeah. And um, but people had a great time, you know. That's all. So so it was like kind of uh, old school, like the um, uh, like drive-in the theaters, like the drive-in. Exactly. It's called yeah. it's called drive-up comedy. Nice. I just went to a, a drag show a couple of weeks ago. Same thing, drive and drag. Like it was the same thing. <laughs> uh, although we we got out out of our we got out of our car because the show was just absolutely phenomenal. So well, you had to you had to get out of your car to show off that dress. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you should you you should have seen me at a party this weekend. <laughs> I think I'm kidding, but there are people watching who know exactly what I'm talking about. Hilarious. Uh, now, uh, Mark. Uh, now, now uh, you mentioned you, you know you weren't able to do too much during the the pandemic, as as 
I guess most of us. Um, but but uh, now that that it's uh, opening up and stuff, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, offline just a little while ago that, that you got a, a new new gig going on in uh, Knoxville. Yeah, I'm doing a, a film with with uh, Pure Flix, uh, a faith based film, um, and and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. You, you know, it, it, I've worked with David A. R. White several times on Pure Flix. Uh, David was was the founder of Pure Flix and uh, Malibu Dan I did with him. I, I'm recurring on that series on Pure Flix and the content I did over there. And every time I work with them, it's always fun. I produced a show called Pure Comedy for them. And, you know, they're, they're always, um, you know, fun to work with. And it's it's always a good time and, and, and you know, a, a very safe, nurturing environment. You know, I think sometimes as, as an actor, you, you, you work in some places and it's not fun. You just want to get your money and go home. And it's like, and I always love working with them. Nice. Nice. Is that your first uh, big gig uh, since the, I guess the pandemic is kind of slowly disappearing? No. Uh, All the Queen's Men. Tyler Perry's All the Queen's Men. Uh, we shot oh, nice. back in December. And, um, and I tell you one thing about that production, you know, Tyler, you know, I think shut the studio down for the pandemic for a couple of months to, to, understand the bubble you know i think he he talked with the nba and he and he, he uh took their advice and then kicked his bubble up a notch you know it's like they hired me then the next day someone came to my house to test me for COVID, and then three days before i flew they tested me again and then uh flew me out you know on private plane and you get there and they take you right to the studio uh you go into the parking structure test again uh, everybody comes in the same day. You go into your house. There's housing on Tyler Perry Studios property. They put you up in your house. You wait four hours for all the tests to come back. And then they open up camp. And uh, two days later, you test again. You get your temperature taken every morning before you can move around campus. Um, and then every four days until you leave, you get tested. And so it was such a safe environment, a safe way to play. And the the work itself, um, this particular project is 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 not you know, your standard Tyler Perry fair. He didn't write it or direct it, and he's not in it. And um, it's it's really uh, cutting edge, I think, for for Tyler Perry Studios. And it's gonna it's gonna grab an audience that that you know maybe he doesn't already have. That's awesome. I think that's interesting, and, and you know the way you're describing that, like the the, the precautions that were being taken. We uh, interviewed somebody last week, and it sounds very similar to what they did. I mean, on a much smaller scale, yeah. But it's like the very same thing, and they even had in the credits that you know nobody caught COVID before, during, or after because everybody was very smart about it, which mm -hmm. is good to hear because, like, you know, as a consumer of entertainment, as we all are, yes, you know, you know it's nice to be able to know that the the folks who are providing this entertainment to us are not putting themselves in any in harm's way uh, in any way shape or form uh because if we enjoy seeing your your work we want to continue seeing your work and we don't <laughs> want to you you know i know the whole thing you know suffer for your art but you know, it's okay if you don't yeah i ain't trying to suffer that hard <laughs> <laughs> i don't blame you as, as the old folks say you know uh, when I was a kid, I remember, remember my great grandmother said to me, "You better put some shoes and a shirt on. You're gonna be breathing out of your behind." <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> no, that sounds uncomfortable on a lot of different levels. <laughs> well, 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 so, uh, well, this is a great se uh, segue. Uh, speaking of, of behinds, um, are you playing one of the male strippers in in the show? I, I, I am not. <laughs> They, they didn't want Greenpeace coming in, rolling me back into the ocean. <laughs> Get him in the water. He can't breathe. <laughs> so, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, the role that you're, you're you're playing? Yeah, the role is 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 uh, sort of the antagonist. He's 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 uh, he's he's a bad guy with good heart. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a it's a great look for me because it's a very dramatic role, but they let me have a little leeway to put a little funny on it, and um, you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see me that way. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Did you did you pull anything from like your your big Mike character into this? No, I pulled or? pulled mostly from my my grown up in Compton 
character. <laughs> Good, uh, good, good source material there. Just thought about all the gangsters I knew growing up. It's like, yeah, I used a little bit of him, a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, uh, speaking of Compton, you you have uh, Clean Out of Compton, which is hilarious. Thank and you. I have a link in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. So, so you know, I know a lot of comedians. Uh, the raunchier, the, the you know, the bigger laughs and everything like that, but. Um, I, I'm not I, necessarily true. No, no, no. And, and I really enjoy clean comedy. It, it's, I could imagine, you know, how much on point you need to be in order to get to laugh. But how difficult do you find it to be to, to, to keep clean comedy? Um, for me, it's easy. I, you know, I started doing comedy in 11th grade and, you know, doing dirty comedy in 11th grade, living in my mother's house was not an option because, yeah. because you know, I, I inevitably, I'd, I'd be out if I'd do some dirty comedy somewhere. Somebody from her church would see me and, and call her up. Lee, you need to you need to talk to that boy of yours. You know, he out there doing that filthy comedy. <laughs> so, so, out your behind. So right? And so it wasn't an option. And 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 then one of the people who I admire in this business that I opened for, uh, Robin Harris. Uh, he was about to blow up. I don't know if you know Robin from you know, he's famous for Baby's kids. And Robin you know, uh, was the star of the Comedy Act Theater in L.A. People showed up and packed the house out because he was hosting every show and uh, not necessarily clean, you know, and, and, and pretty blue on, on, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. But I would work with him at, at a park at like two o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday and he'd be doing the same act squeaky clean. And he said to me, he says, Mark, always write clean. You can work anywhere. And it's it's a fact. Nice. Spe speaking of all that, um, you, you mentioned your mom's church and, and then, uh, you know, you work uh, a lot with Pure Flix Entertainment. Um, well, how's your faith work into uh, your um, your work and, and your acts and, and, and the jobs you take? I think faith helps me just relax and know that something is coming. You know, I, I think as an actor, you know, you, you're always looking for that next job and and sometimes you start to panic because it's not coming when you when you think it should come or when you want it to come. And then but but just having faith, you know, allow, allows me to, to relax and go, you know what, I'll be fine. And sure enough, boom, here's a job. Nice. Well, I think definitely the, the faith part could uh, translate into, you know, the, it's like I have faith with translates into confidence because I know that, you know, I'm good enough to get you know, job X, Y, or Z, or I'm good enough that other people are going to call me. I don't have to go searching for stuff per se. Exactly. Exactly. And I, and I think part of the pandemic too was, was, was like God teaching me patience and, and trust, you know, trust that I got you. Yeah. You know, cause throughout that year, like, like I remember the first three weeks of the pandemic, I was losing gigs daily. It's like, you know, people would call or send a text and, and say, hey, we got to reschedule or this thing is canceled completely or whatever. And I never needed anything during the pandemic. It's like everything you know was taken care of. I was like, wow, look, look at God work. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like I, I had something I was working on that was supposed to happen that the, the weekend everything shut down. And then we, we picked it back up and we're starting. We're doing it again in a couple of weeks. Like, so it's it's nice to see that you know, that perseverance payoff. Yeah. Right. Well, like my, my last audition before everything shut down was for a film called Family Camp. And I killed it. It's like I, I got in the parking lot and I remember changing shirts because I, I had on this 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 Robert Graham shirt and, and it was hot and I was sweating. So I put on a T-shirt and then I called my, my agent and told them, um, hey, I, I think, I think uh, we're going to get this one because it, it felt like I just killed it. And sure enough, they, they liked me, and then everything shut down. Yeah. But then June rolled around, and that film came back, and we shot it in Oklahoma. Wow. Nice. I, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know. And, yeah. And you may go through a little suffering now, but it, it's things have a way of working out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hi. You know, I'm, I, I'm with you on that. Like, I've been out of work for a three months at this point but i've gotten a lot of writing done i've been doing some behind the scenes work where i a lot more about you know filmmaking and whatnot so you know things are things are all right you know it'll yeah work out 
Yeah, I mean, if, you know, I'm not working at all. My wife is working about 80, 80 hours a week. So between the two of us, like, you know, it averages out to we're both working 40. So that, you know, I think that works, right? There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you doing the cooking and cleaning? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, a lot of it. Yeah, and the the shopping, like all the stuff that needs to be done during the day. She's a she's a biochemist working on like COVID. wow. So yeah, yeah, she's doing important work. There you go. <laughs> uh, I want to take a uh, quick break here for a second uh, to tell you about Terrificon, and uh, you know I approached Mitch because you know I wanted to get some commercials to to show you guys. Uh, you know we absolutely love Terrificon. It's one of the best run cons here in Connecticut. And uh, right in Mohegan Sun, it's a huge con. And, uh, you know, if you love comics and, you know, celebrities as well, you'll have a blast there. But uh, let me see. Uh, we'll, we'll play this one. We got a couple different ones. Meanwhile, near Terrificon. Imagine being frozen in ice for 70 years. Oh, God, no, I can't stand the cold and ice. But seriously, you should all go to Terrificon. It's the biggest comic book convention in all of Connecticut. It's got stars from all those DC comic book movies and Doctor Who and uh, Star Wars. Oh, I love sci-fi. Yeah, and they also have all the best comic book artists and writers, the people that make the Hulk comic books, Captain America comics, Spider-Man, and, and um, you know, what's the other guy with the hat and the whip and the fedora? Dr. Jones. Yeah, yeah, that guy, too. It's all a Terrificon. It's on July 30th to August 1st in Connecticut. For more information, go to Terrificon.com. Visit Terrificon.com for all your Terrificon needs. Is this x-ray? No, that's the fourth floor. Are you sure? Trust me. And uh, I send a new convention center at Mohegan Sun right off the Winter Garage. And a uh, huge, huge convention center. Patsy, you were there last year, right? Uh, no, nobody was there last year, but the I, year before, I, yes, yes. Year before. You know, I it's like I blocked out 2020 altogether, but yeah. And it was a lot of fun. It was some good stuff. I got to meet uh, Maurice LaMarche, one of my favorite uh, voice actors. Uh, oh. It was uh, it was pretty awesome. Did you watch when they had, uh, uh, what the hell was it? Um. And that was a great commercial, by the way. Like oh, I yeah. think Mitch does a great job with those. Yeah, he does. Uh, you know what? My mind's gone bush, so we'll move on. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Mark. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's pandemic brain. Well, yeah. we have Mark, Mark, what about you? Uh, speaking of uh, voice actors, PJ just brought one up. Uh, uh, have you ever done voice acting for, for animation for uh, Hollywood or anything? Not animation, but I've done, I did eight years on Adventures in Odyssey. Uh, okay. Focus on the Family Show. Um, I've done a lot of commercial stuff. Uh, over the years, uh, work for the same people over and over again. You know, it's, it, com, com, animation and, and voiceover is so clicky. It's like you know, for for my voice, I got to wait for a guy to die to get into that spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I took what, this back to mouth uh, for drinks back. during the pandemic. Hey, let's go out for a drink and meet you at the bar. <laughs> uh, so, and, and, and you, you, you mentioned uh, Family Camp. Uh, why don't you tell us a lot of, about that film uh, and when's it coming out and all that stuff? I have no idea when Family Camp is coming out. I, I know that they they uh, were really being meticulous in the editing, and uh, it's it's a it's a very fun family faith based kind of film, and it it uh, takes place at a camp. And I'm I'm a pastor, and this guy. Uh, who I, I don't know why his name is escaping me right now. There's two guys that have a podcast together, and they're they're very funny, but they are the leads in the thing, and and it, uh, uh, it it's a lot of family fun and a lot of family values. I, you know, it's like I, I watch a lot of the old shows, like like Andy Griffith, and and I notice how they weave in these family values into these stories. And Family Camp is done very similarly. It's not overhanded, and overhandedly you know, save your soul kind of a film, but it's, it's, it's definitely steeped in morals and, and family values. So uh, Tommy Woodard and uh, Eddie James. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they are, those dudes wait. are funny, man. They are hilarious. Just, it's, so, even, even off camera. It's like, they're very funny together. So speaking of, of conventions and whatnot, you know, I don't know if you've ever done any as, you know, as a guest or, or, or not, but if you were to go to a convention, you know, who are you going to wait in line to stay? And this could be anyone all time. 
you know, somebody you, you admired as a kid, somebody now, like, who are you waiting to spend your hard earned money to meet and talk to? You get a minute, minute and a half. Who That's an easy one. The first, the, the, the only person I'm willing to stand in line with, just because when I was on Chuck, we have people spending the night on the sidewalk out in front of San Diego Convention Center trying to get into Hall 20. And, um, you know, there's 6,000 seats, I believe, and, and there would be 8,000 people in line. You know, there's nobody that I'd be willing to stand in line overnight for except Jesus. Okay. That's it. That's hey, fair. If you ain't Jesus, I ain't standing in line. <laughs> That's fair. And you're not, you're, you're sense, referring yeah. like, like actual, not like, you know, like, oh, it's Ray Allen. He played Jesus Shuttlesworth. Like, no, like, you mean like, for <laughs> our, Jesus. No, it's, it, it's got to be Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. Right. <laughs> right. And, and, and sp speaking of uh, um, San Diego Comic Con, uh, you, you've you've attended obviously, as you just mentioned. How how, yeah. how, how were they? Were were, were they the fun time to do those things? You know, I started going just to people watch years ago before before even you know I was involved with Chuck, and you know Chuck was the first time that I was actually you know invited to go. And it is a lot of fun, you know, especially just seeing people in their costumes. And, 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 and it's, it's one of those situations where costume wise, you get in where you fit in. Like you could see a guy standing in line in a $7,000 Iron Man suit and standing right next to him is a college kid who, who took his football helmet and took the, the, the face mask off it and spray painted it and got a cardboard box and made the rest of his, his, his Iron Man suit standing right next to each other and that is fantastic it's like yeah. you, know, you know i give you a for effort and you for an a for having a lot of dough <laughs> yeah it's whatever you have within your within your means and your your ability to create and adapt you know it's no different from making a film you know like you were saying earlier like oh yeah we shot this thing you know in six and a half hours or whatever it was and we, we made this amazing film that looks like a big budget thing it's because you right. know work within your means and it's the the same with you know really any creative people it all just depends on the scale and the the medium yeah but but you know i, I mean too some, sometimes you got to keep in mind that not every costume is for everybody and when i say everybody i mean body the body sometimes you know the the, the, the lady from uh uh, what's the movie where she falls in through the cab and Bruce Bruce Willis is driving? Oh, yeah, uh, Fifth Element. I mean, yeah, the lady from the Fifth oh, Element. Yeah. That outfit. I've seen that outfit on many different bodies, and I'm telling you, it's not for all of them. Uh, I'm not shaming nobody's body. I'm just saying sometimes you might want to go with with the Moomoo. That might be a better fit. Oh, Something from right. Star Wars and brown could be good. Again, because that costume I wore this at a, at a convention. I was 11 from Stranger Things, and this was my outfit. <laughs> this was my outfit. I shaved my head. I shaved my beard. There were people that didn't recognize me that I saw the day before. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, you know. Did, but did you have fun? That's the, did you that's have right. fun? That's the thing. And I, I, am not, uh, I am not built like an 11-year-old girl. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you that much. Um, but I also admire the, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you do as well, the, the, the confidence in yourself that you have. You're like, you know what? Yeah, I might be, you know, uh, I might not be Mila Jovovich size, but I like this character and I'm going to dress like this and I don't give a damn what anybody else says. So. That, that part, that, I mean, that part is great, you know, yeah. but, but if, you, if your band-aids are, are rolling into your rolls and disappearing, <laughs> chances are you got to give it a rethink or at least some double-sided tape. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, so, so you mentioned Chuck, which is an incredible series. But um, do do you keep in touch with anybody from from those guys? Uh, I, I, I hit Zach up probably you know two or three times a year to say hello, see how he's doing. Um, Scott Krinsky, I probably talk to more than anybody because he's a comic. Um, Vic Sahai and I keep threatening to to, to go out and hang out. Um, but I'm down here and he's up there. Um, Julia Ling, every time uh, I, I post something that she likes, she'll, she'll like it and we'll end up chatting for a little bit. Um, and, and we all got together during the pandemic and did a, did a table read of a show of one of the episodes. That's awesome. And, and that was nice to see everybody, you know, back together again. That's nice. That's always awesome. Like, especially like if, uh, 
if there's like an animated thing. So you said you'd never done any animation, but if you could, is I there was a- close twice on on uh, Men in Black and Ghostbusters, and no. uh, Men in Black. You know the the note that I got from casting. You know, uh, going into the producer session was, yeah, they don't want it to be like Will Smith. And then I said, okay, so I'll do something different because I did Will Smith. And 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 then when I finally saw the thing, it was somebody who did Will Smith. And I was yeah. like, well. Yeah, and then the other one uh, was just you know just didn't go my way, but you know ended up in front of producers and didn't get it. Now, is that like would those have been like your first choice? You're like, oh, you know, I've always been a huge Ghostbusters fan, and I I would love to get on the show. Or are you like, oh man, I would love to get on to Star Wars. I just wish Phil Lamar would stop taking every role. No, I think I'm just an actor and just want to just want to okay. work, you know. Uh, and and I think as an actor, you want to do things that you don't normally do. Okay. I didn't know if you had any like specific fandoms that were near and dear to your heart that you were like, man, I would love to work on this project. Nah, I, the, the only show that I wish I could I could work on would be Walking Dead. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that looked like that might be fun. Yeah. Now, 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 you said, uh, uh, you know, the animated version of Men in Black or whatever, but, but, um, since you worked with Will Smith, uh, okay, can you imitate him good? Do, do, you, you got a great voice I, for him? I think back then, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I have a very good ear, so I could listen to someone and then do their voice. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of jobs that way, a lot of a lot of revoicing. Like, like I, I revoiced Eddie Murphy at the end of, of the movie Life when he and Martin are sitting in the stands and they're old men. So I revoiced old Eddie Murphy because he didn't want to come in and do it. <laughs> Yeah. About that? And it was great. I, you know, so, so they they'll send you a, a, a tape, and you listen to it, and then you give them the read back, and and that's what it was. All right, and then they just add it in. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, uh, you you know, you, you I, I did bring up uh, stacks and how you produced it. Uh, uh, do you like producing? I mean, that that does that take a lot of work and, and a lot you know like searching for the money like- and stuff. Well, for this, it didn't take a lot of work because because you know, Gerald pretty much did everything, Gerald and Meredith. And um, uh, uh, I produced theater, you know, when I was growing up, when I was living in L.A., you know, we, we produced a lot of stuff out of the Los Angeles Theater Center. Uh, we're the Black Theater Artist Workshop, and so we produced a bunch of, pr- bunch of productions there. Uh, I produced a lot of comedy shows, and um, right now I'm trying to produce a, a TV show and there's a sizzle reel that I'm getting ready to shoot so that we can try to get that done as well. Um, I produced, you know, the uh, uh, pure comedy for pure flicks. I produced a, a, a reality show, sort of a cooking show kind of thing, travel more of a travel log cooking show for Bobby Flay's company, Rockfish. And, and once we finished shooting, the guy, I guess, who was, who was our producer from, from Rockfish, I guess left. And then the new guy, didn't want to do anything with it. He was like, well, I have my own ideas. And I was like, well, can we have the footage? And they wouldn't give us the footage either. So I'm like, ah. Uh, that's tough. That's irritating. Yeah. Oh, really irritating. I'm, I'm hoping to run into Bobby somewhere to ask him for it. Now, do you have, uh, you know, you've done a lot of different stuff. Like, do you have aspirations to work outside of, like, stuff that you've done before? Like, oh, I want to direct or I want to edit film or I want to, you know, work on a music score. Like, is there anything that you haven't done that you want to do? Um, I, I keep getting this question. Like, when I do comedy, I do a lot, a lot of comedy at churches. And every time I do comedy at a church, someone asks me for my music because I sing a little bit in my act. And um, uh, I, I don't have any music. <laughs> so a friend of mine who I did a play with with music who knows that I can sing said, hey, hey you got to you gotta do it. And so he and I are, are currently working on uh, an arrangement of hymns so that I can create some music. And I, I think, if anything, I, I'd like to sing a little bit. All right, that's cool. Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't think I want to be a pop star or anything, but it'd be nice to, to actually keep working at it and be conf- confident enough to sing anywhere. You know? I mean, and there's tons of movies that are getting remade into musicals right now. I mean, you know, <laughs> you just, you got uh, the new Cinderella movie that's coming out, uh, yeah. a musical with Bobby Porter as the fairy godmother, which I think is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, I, you know, it doesn't, doesn't hurt to expand the resume. Exactly. I, you know, um, I, I think, 
I think you know people always say that that comedy is hard, but I think singing is 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 harder than comedy because uh, as a comic, you know, you hit a bad joke, boom, you're right into a new one. You got three, four, five minutes of bad song. Hmm. There's, there's actually a uh, new Apple show that's a combination of the both comedy and singing. Uh, Central Park. Oh, really? It is friggin' hilarious. It, it's an uh, animated show, uh, but it, it's it's like a musical, but it's a comedy, and right. it, it's awesome. I gotta uh, find it. Yeah, it, it's uh, uh, Kristen Bell was in the first season, and they just replaced her. But it's it's about a man that he's a like the park ranger for central park and he has a family and there's this uh old woman that runs a uh hotel right next to the park and she wants to like take over the park and build on it and stuff it's it's hilarious uh wolfie in the chat room says uh you've worked on a few horror movies and you said working on walking dead would be cool to you uh can you give us a story of working on child's play three or halloween two uh, I'll give you two stories. The, 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 the Child's Play 3 story was they kept moving my start date, and uh, I ended up being in a play, and they finally get back to me and want me to go to work, but I'm in this play, and we're in tech rehearsals, and you can't miss tech. And so I end up at the very end of the movie because we already had the deal, so they were going to have to pay me either way. So the deal was already in place. So they... Um, you see me at the very end of, of, of the, I think it's Child's Play three or four or something, and and I'm a I'm I'm a cop, and all you see is me going, watch your head, <laughs> and that's and that's that. <laughs> and then, Amazing. And then the other the other one was was Halloween two, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween two, mm -hmm. and I actually did the first one, and. Uh, the main character, the uh, was it Jason? Is that is that the, the, the bad guy? So Jason is supposed to come. He's breaking out of the insane asylum. He's supposed to come into the office, kill me, go through the window, the office window, and get out. So we did all of this this great work where um, uh, Rob comes to me, and says, "Hey, so here's here's the scene. You know, here's the lines. But you know, one of the reasons I hired you was that your ad libs were so great. I want you to just." You know, say these lines, but also just ad lib whatever. And so I ad lib some stuff, and then he cut, and he come. He says, "Well, doing that take, you said this, this, and this, and this. Do it again, and keep that stuff in." Okay. So we do another take, and and I do some more stuff, and he come back with even more. He goes, "Okay, you you said this, this, and this. Keep that in too." And and so we did probably ten takes, and he says, "Okay, now run it all together." And so we ran it all together, and it was a great little monologue. I wish I had that footage. And so he um, moves on to. To the next part of the scene where Jason comes in to kill me and he doesn't kill me. He kicks through the front door and just walks out. And so we were at the end of the day, so we didn't have time for another take. And so um, uh, I get a call, you know, a few months later from, from Rob saying, hey, uh, this is Rob Zombie. Uh, just wanted, wanted to let you know that I had to cut you out of the film because he didn't kill you. So I was looking for things to cut to get under 90 minutes, he says, but it wasn't your performance. He says, he says, your performance was great. Don't worry, I'll get you in the next one. And sure enough, I get a call from Rob Zombie. You know, they're doing the next one and I'm in. That's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah um, that's great. So one uh, of the two times that, that someone has said they, they get me in again and it happened. Uh, the other time was Seinfeld. Very cool. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you, you mentioned that you do a lot of stand up for for, for the church and, and whatnot, and 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 bringing the singing and stuff. Uh, do, do you uh, still do like clubs and stuff too, just just for fun? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 you do. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do, do you do tour? Do you tour around the country where people uh, that are listening to this could could see you? Yeah, I try. I try to pop out and hit and hit some clubs. Um, I, I don't do like a whole lot of like, like a lot of comics do like a bunch of dates in a row. Um, mm -hmm. Because I act a lot, I try to grab a free weekend here and there and get out and, and see something um, and, and do something. Um, I toured, you know, Canada in February, right before the, the pandemic started, you know, that was my last tour and we mm -hmm. did 13 cities in 10 days. And wow. that, that, that kind of made me go, yeah, yeah, this, this, this touring thing is for a young man. <laughs> 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 yeah. It, it's different when you're, when you're touring on your own, uh, momentum, I think, but I was doing a tour called the Date Night Tour, so so I had no control over anything that happened, and clearly didn't ask enough questions before I got there. 
<laughs> and I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 13 in 10 days. Yeah, I mean, that's just crazy. Well, how about that? Yeah. Well, well yeah, good for yeah, you. Well, you, well, you survived well, it. We started in Winnipeg. And we got there. I used to say that I'd rather be hot. I'd rather be cold than hot because you can you can keep putting stuff on, and and when you're hot, you can be butt naked and still hot. And right. and then we got to Winnipeg. It was 14 below, and we got out of the car, <laughs> and my pants were frozen. Hmm. And I was like, okay, uh, I, I have to rethink the whole hot versus cold thing because because <laughs> this sucks. We, we were so happy to get to Edmonton where it was seven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're all, we're all from the northwest, so like our northeast, 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 northeast. So it's like fourteen <laughs> below. It's like yeah, okay. So we're we're going outside for recess today. All right. Well, the people that live there were going. Uh, this That's is no big deal. We're like in shorts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know, normally we're thirty, forty-five below. I was what? <laughs> <laughs> Driving along and went. You know what? This this is the place. This is where we're going to set up camp right here in Winnipeg. Ooh, the air hurts my feet. <laughs> this is a good place to sit down. Right. I know what what was there that that made them choose that location. Yeah, that's a good exactly. point. Yeah, this set up the city. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> outside. I guess I got to get to work. <laughs> that's too funny. Uh, oh, well, I mean, Phil, you're 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 up north in uh, New Hampshire, so you guys. Well, I know we get cold days like that too, where your pants freeze, but it's just. Fourteen below is kind of rare for around here. Yeah, oh. yeah, that, that's 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 pretty cold. There's no doubt. But but it but it's you know I mean for, for I guess for Winnipeg it, it's still warm. You know. Yeah. 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 Our friend Mark says it's thirty five below usually. We get we get those days where we get the polar vortex and it's colder outside of our houses than it is on Mars. Like. <laughs> Yeah, but we get those every so often. And you know, folks from a summer, uh, a more southern, year-round summer type climate, I understand. It's like, oh man, I need a jacket. Why? Oh, uh, it's like sixty-five out. It's like what? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we're, we're we're the people here that that you know in April when it's forty-five degrees, we're in t-shirts and shorts because oh, oh this is warm yeah, because we just I'd came out of zero-degree weather for the past four months. You know? Yeah, well, here in San Diego, you know, the temperature gets really cold, and we have to break out our, our thick t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> it's below a hundred. Like, oh, it's seventy out. Ooh. <laughs> well, somebody grabbed me a blanket. I'm a little, I'm a little bit. Nippy. I gotta get that park out. It's 65 today. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's funny. Like we'll we'll look at you know it's like oh there was you know a dusting of snow in like you know Alabama and you see just like miles of cars backed up on the highway. Meanwhile, like there's two feet of snow outside and you know your boss like why aren't you at work yet? It's only yeah. two feet of snow. I, I was supposed That's to do a true. show in Raleigh. And 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 it snowed. And before I get off the plane, there's a message on my on my phone that said, you know, they may cancel the show. And so I check into the hotel, and I was like, well, I'm so glad I didn't pay for this plane ride, because usually I'll just pay for it and get reimbursed. And so I'm so glad I didn't do that. And then um, the next morning, it snowed for like three minutes, and they canceled the show. <laughs> and I was like, oh. what? I was, what? <laughs> and apparently they said, well, you know, some of the some of the wait staff can't get can't get to the to the club, so we won't have enough wait staff. I was like, I'll do comedy and wait the tables. <laughs> Think about the tips you'd get. Right, right. right. That's, that's true. That's that's I would have made doing the comedy. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, the ground is wet. Yeah, but it's also cold. Right. Well, that's like here in California. You know, it, it rains, and people think the sky is falling. Mm. Oh yeah, for sure. Now, now, uh, uh, let me ask you this: uh, You mentioned that you know Stacks is up on YouTube and whatnot. Do, do you have like a YouTube channel or, or doing anything over there that that people can follow you on? I have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, I haven't been vigilant in putting stuff up, but when I do, I, I just bombard it with stuff. You know, like like uh, I remember the first time I started using it, um, I had had it for like two years. I hadn't put anything on, and then I had all these these videos from from Chuck behind the scenes stuff. I started throwing that stuff up there. It's like every day I just throw something up. And um, uh, I think it's about time to do another bombardment. 
because I got a lot That's of stuff on cool. my phone, but I haven't, I haven't done anything with it. Oh, uh, we, we do have uh, a bunch of your links in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. Plus also your, your Instagram as well. Uh, I, I love, uh, you know, I, I, I follow you and I, I love seeing your inspirational quotes, you know, it's, uh, it's, sure. uh, I love, well, well you know, it's, it's, someone asked me, um, you know, why, why do I do that? And I said, well, you know, I, I've always done it on Twitter from day one. I've always like, like the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I read, uh, scripture from the U version Bible, you know, the, today's scripture. And yep. I've been doing that for, from day one of Twitter. And then uh, when the pandemic happened, you know, uh, all the other, my other outlets, I would put up all my posts from, from shows coming up and I had nothing to post. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just post the same stuff. And I started doing it. And people like it. So I keep doing it. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah that's sometimes, good. especially after the, the the last fifteen months that we've had, you know, a lot of people have been uh, tested in a variety of different ways, and sometimes you, you just need a little bit of affirmation, whether you're religious or not. You know, just the fact that someone's out there, like, hey, you know, I believe in you. I, I'm, you know, it's okay. You know, we're all going through the same thing. You're not alone. Exactly. Uh, it, it's nice to see and hear that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, because probably probably every day someone sends me a message in inbox. I needed to hear that today. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's and, awesome. It's a good thing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and and you know, with your reach, you know, I mean, uh, people uh, love your work and whatnot. They follow you, so my so reach, uh, my reach on Instagram and stuff is not that big. I'm hoping that I'll get some of your followers. <laughs> <laughs> I just followed you too. So Thank yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, about anytime you... five thousand, but but uh, Instagram, I think I'm only at around seven. No, that's All right. No, that's... Yeah. Hey, hey, it's still like you said. I said seven thousand uh, people that that you know you get to contact, and like you said, you get a, a note every every day, which is great. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And, and, so. and unlike most celebs, I actually talk to people every day. So like every day, if I have time, if there's a message in my inbox, I'll answer it. Which oh. is very cool. Like a lot of people really appreciate that. So it's not just like they're yelling into the void. You know, sometimes the void will answer back. Which, right, is, right, which is right. which is nice, you know, because the most annoying question, though, is is uh, can you help me get in touch with Zach? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can totally understand someone doing that. Like, you know, he, he never answers. Is, is what they say. <laughs> I mean, if I'm doing I'm not going to ask someone else. I'm going to reach out directly to him and be like, hey, you want to be on my podcast? You know, something like that. You know, I'm not going to add like, hey, will you ask your friend to be? A, it's like, well, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> well i think you're great can you ask your friend if he'll if he'll, if he'll come on my show what about me what, that's what like about... when i met stan lee when you're at comic-con we, we went to this after party it was it was all of us that that were still there it was me zach yvonne uh adam baldwin scott krinsky was there i don't think Vic was there and we're going into this little this little club and Stan Lee is coming out, and he sees Zach, and he shakes his hand, and then they introduce him to Adam Baldwin, and then he comes over and shakes uh, uh, Krinsky's hand, and then he's about to shake my hand, and he sees Yvonne and just, like, pushes me out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 it makes sense. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> It is your own, so yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, what was it like working on uh, uh, Terminator Two? It was fantastic, and I'll tell you this story. It's like it's like there've been several times in my career where I felt like um, maybe I should have went ahead and gone to law school. You know, where where things got really slow, and, and and that was the first time where where I think it was like three months. I didn't work for three months, and. You know, literally, I was floating from one thing to the next, from theater to TV to film, just just career just moving, commercials, everything. And all of a sudden, I had three months of nothing. And I was panicking. I was like, man, did I make a mistake? All my friends from, from the debate team at USC are all clerking for judges or are working on major law firms or whatever. And so I decided, you know, I saw this thing, this ad in the paper, learn to deal cards. <laughs> So I decided, okay, I'm going to go learn to deal cards and, and go to Monaco and, and be a card dealer. And uh, they said, you could, you, could, you could audit the first class. If you liked it, it's $499. So I audit the first class. I go to the class, and about 
hour and a half in, suits come in and shut the class down. Oh, wow. Apparently, oh, wow. they're laundering money through the class. <laughs> oh, oh and then and then and, and there's been several times in my career where where I felt like God went, no, you're not doing that. You're going to do this. And then about a week and a half later, I get a call from the wardrobe designer from Terminator, Terminator 2 asking me for my sizes. And I was like, what's this for? And she said, Terminator 2. And I had auditioned like almost three months prior. And I called my agents and said, hey, I just got a call from the wardrobe designer, Terminator 2. And they said, oh, yeah, we're on the phone with him right now. <laughs> and, How about that? And, awesome. and at the time, it was the most money I'd ever made on a film and um, the most fun I would had on a film at the time. Um, just, you know, I was fascinated by this gigantic production and how they spent money on different things and, and, and you know, the camera setups and James Cameron's meticulousness, all that stuff was, was really fascinating to me. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't rest. You know, it's like, I just, I get to set, get dressed and get out to set and watch. And, um, and then one night, uh, you know, I realized, you know, we're shooting, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19 hour days. I should probably lay down at some point, you know, because after the shoot was over, I had to drive home. You know, which was, I think at the time I was living in, in Venice and we were shooting out, uh, little known fact, uh, when you watch the Rodney King video where he's getting his beat and there's big giant lights in the background, that was Terminator 2. And so we're oh, shooting wow. way out there. And uh, one night I got really sleepy driving home and then I, I started resting. If they didn't need me on set, I'd rest. And so now I can I can sleep anywhere. You know, I just drop, <laughs> just drop off. I'd be standing up at a party. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I would imagine the commute from, from L.A. to Italy was quite arduous. <laughs> oh, very funny, PJ. Very funny. Well played. Well played. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I wonder why you didn't want to drive. Oh, well, hey, hey, we're from New England. We don't know all these things in California. You know? I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you, PJ, on that one. I know it's there, but it was the joke was there, too. The that's joke was that's there. The joke was, was there. He's a comedy guy. He appreciates the effort. I hope. <laughs> I, I did. I did. But 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 to get back to your point, uh, you know, that there's been so many times where I just felt like you know I should I should do something else, and then the door would open to a new gig, and I'm doing what I'm doing, and and I realized I love doing this. There's nothing else I'd rather do. Which that's is awesome. awesome. With, yeah, that's yeah. great. Once you find that thing that you're passionate about, that you love, that you can do and, and make money doing, you know, make a living, you know, have a, a you know, a, a, a good home and, and support for your loved ones. Like if you're able to do that, doing the thing that you love, because I've yeah. done a lot of stuff that I don't like and I yeah. have enjoyed, but you do what you have to do. But if you get to do what you love to do, that's a, a whole yeah. different ball game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice. so I'm going to, uh, I know we're coming close on time. Uh, so we're going to end on this question unless you guys have anything else, but, um, you know, we are on the dorkening. What makes you a dork? What, what is there something other than like acting or anything that you're like, we had Bruce Blanche on and we found out that he loves the history of like sunken vessels, like the Titanic and stuff like that. Uh, what is there something, you know, is there something that you have like a deep passion about that's like outside of your profession? You know, and, and it's funny. I don't know that, I don't know that it makes me a dork, but, but I'm fascinated by it and, and I love doing it. You know, my pastime, um, uh, I like shotgun sports. Nice. Okay. So shooting sporting clays is, is a lot of fun for me. Um, nice. And, 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 you know, like, like I went to USC on a debate scholarship. So I think that made me a dork, even though I wasn't, I was an athlete, and, but I remember taking the, the high school proficiency exam in junior high. And I ended up in the highest English class at our school and athletes would walk by and see me in there and go, what are you doing in there? I'm like, I don't know. Apparently I can read. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like everybody's got their one thing, like no matter what it is, like you could be like, you know, Obviously, I, I'm, I'm into to sports and I have all my stuff behind me. You know, right. if I can sit there, it's like, oh, you know what comic book Spider-Man was in? It's like, yeah. Oh, you know what, you know, Matty Lou's batting average was in 1964? How is that any different? You know, right. like, 
You can right. tell well, what the well, Cowboys' record was last year for the last eight years when the last time they made the playoffs. But you know that's not being a dork. Come on. Well, I can I can tell you, Doug Caning. You know, uh, out of the last you know twenty two Bianchi Cups uh, action pistol competitions, he won nineteen of them, and 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 out of two hundred and eighty eight. 88 possible bullseyes the last year I, I was there and shot the tournament. He shot 282. <laughs> so, you know, wow. it's, there it it's is. Like guys, guys like that, it, it's fascinating to me, and, it, and I'm kind of dorky about it. <laughs> to me, it's just – it's it's synonymous for, for passion. That's all yep. I know. That's all exactly. I know. Yeah. What absolutely. you're passionate about. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we urge everybody definitely check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. Uh, so, uh, Mark, we talked about uh, Instagram, but wh- where do you like interacting with your fans the most? Um, Instagram, Messenger, e- either or. Uh, you can you can go to my website, marcusvillance.com, and all, all of my social media links are there. Um, but but definitely go to, go to Instagram and, and follow me and like some stuff, and, and uh, chances are I'll follow you back. Awesome. Well, do fill up. Uh, yeah, uh, folks can uh, go to darkdiscussions.com, which is a movie and pop culture website. It's updated daily with uh, news, articles, and whatnot. Uh, 10 year anniversary was just this past March. And uh, hopefully, folks will uh, go and check it out. Nice. That's a. Uh, you can uh, find me here every Monday, uh, Throwdown Thursday, every Thursday, although we did just take our first ever week off. Uh, due to physical and mental health uh, necessities. Uh, but we just hit our five-year anniversary. So five years, one day off. I think that's okay. Yes. Uh, you can also check out throwdownthursdaypodcast.com. Uh, I actually just posted an article right before we left of uh, 10 uh, characters and 10 real life and real life people. It was a little bit of a mix. Uh, who I think are worthy of lifting uh, Thor's hammer. And then, of course, because I am who I am, I added five uh, honorable mentions because I can't just stick to a top 10 list. So check it out. <laughs> uh, and uh, for me, just Google uh, Leo Pond. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which. Uh, but more importantly, follow these awesome people and uh, go follow Mark, you know, definitely for his inspiration, but also his comedy. Absolutely love him. Uh, but definitely also check out, uh, uh, I, I forget the name of it. It's uh, Clean Out of Compton. Link is down below. And uh, yeah, uh, the Dorkening Podcast Network.com. I'm updating the website. So uh, the Dorkening Podcast Network.com. Uh, and once I get everything all set, I'll redirect to Dorkening to that. Uh, and with that, we'll catch you guys later. Bye.